This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 124, All for One. Caden nearly pumped a fist into the air and cheered as Iolaire sent flows of icy breath at all of the behemoth's heads. The main head was fully encased in ice. Caden moved out of reach of that mouth when it broke out. Already there were cracks forming all along the ice sarcophagus. Caden flew well out of reach, going round the huge body to where Iolaire's head came out of the massive form. How do I get Iolaire out of there? How can I help? Any time one of the other heads got too close, Iolaire would send a gout of ice at them and they'd rear back trying to shake off the ice muzzles that would appear around their jaws, keeping them sealed shut. Iolaire, I'm here, I'm here, what do we do? He heard a soft twitter in his mind. The feeling of connection flooded Caden. Iolaire was there, in him, surrounding him, joining with him. Caden imagined Iolaire ripping its slender white form out of the behemoth's bulk. He imagined the skin splitting and Iolaire sliding out of the interior, almost like being birthed. He imagined pulling Iolaire out, drawing Iolaire to him, making his spirit separate from the behemoth. And then a crack appeared where Iolaire's head was attached to the body and strange fluid began to stream out. There was no way that the behemoth's body could hold all of the dragon forms, so Iolaire was still separate or this was just a visualization of the upcoming spiritual separation. Yes, yes, come, Eiler, come to me. The crack lengthened and widened. He saw the tip of a white wing sticking out. Claws tore through the behemoth's skin, exposing more of Eiler's form. Screams of pain echoed from all of the other heads that weren't frozen shut. They snapped at Eiler. Caden distracted them. Hey, ugly, hey, nasty, over here. Caden waved his arms wildly above his head. The heads, maddened with pain, were easily distracted and went after Caden. He flew like his life depended on it, slicing between them so that the heads smashed into one another and were stunned for a moment. They were so angry that they didn't even attempt to use their powers, but if they had, they would have sent them at each other. The heads let out earth-shattering screams that had Caden curling into a ball, hands over his ears, head ringing, Luckily, they were too distracted by their agony to snap at him as he had stopped flying. The crack was now a split in the behemoth's back, and Iolaire's form, covered in fluid and all curled up, was revealed. Iolaire! Caden spread his arms wide as if to welcome Iolaire into the world again. Iolaire's head twisted around to see how far it had come. That was the moment that the main head broke through the ice sarcophagus. There was a tremendous crack and the ice slid off in sheets and fell to the ground with a crash. Rage burned in those strange yellow eyes. Uh Uh-oh. Iolaire, get ready to... That main head lunged towards Iolaire, jaws open wide, aiming at the white dragon's slender neck. One bite would sever Iolaire's head from its body. Iolaire let out a terrified squeal and strove to crawl out of the behemoth's body, but its way was impeded by the slick fluid. No! Get away, you bastard! Caden screamed as he swooped in close enough to smell that ophidian breath. The behemoth's head turned so fast that Caden was nearly sucked between those jaws. He backpedaled and was sure it would have looked hilarious if not for the fact that he was about to get cut in two. There was another blast of ice from Ilair, giving Caden those precious moments to fly out of reach. But another head nearly chomped him. Only zigging instead of zagging got him out of range, though his foot brushed against dragon teeth and was slick with dragon saliva. Ew. The main head, though, had redirected its efforts towards Iolaire. It went again for that slender white neck. Its teeth barely brushed the white scales. Caden's mouth opened in a scream, almost as if he felt Iolaire's pain. And then he felt something wet roll down his neck. His hand went out to touch it. Iolaire was bleeding. He was bleeding. He had felt Iolaire's pain because it was his pain, because it was their pain. We're bound. It's still there and growing back the bond. But that meant that if Iolaire was damaged, so was he. 
Iolair had managed to lean away from the behemoth's main head, but just barely was out of its reach. The other heads were swarming towards Iolair, herding it back towards the main head. The main head grinned and cut him a look of triumph when Iolair trilled in terror as it had nowhere to go but back within range of those jaws. No! Caden screamed. The mane's head jaws went to snap shut around Iolair's trembling throat. But then it stopped. Those yellow eyes went blank with shock. And then a black head rose up from behind. Raziel's jaws were clamped around the behemoth's throat, holding it in place. The behemoth's head flew upwards in a scream as more of that strange liquid poured out between Raziel's teeth. I'll learn now! Get out of there now! Raziel, hold it! Caden cried. With Raziel holding onto the behemoth's screaming central head, Iolair clawed its way out of the behemoth's body, sliding out the final way, covered in that strange fluid, almost as if being birthed. Iolair's wings were too heavy with the liquid to fly, and it could only drag itself along the crater's floor. Caden flew down so that he was even with Iolair's head. Blue eyes, now fully focused upon him, crinkled with love around the edges. Caden threw his arms around that beloved snout and kissed it again and again. This was the first time they had touched in a way. Oh, Lair. Oh, God, Lair. Caden cried. We have to move, baby. We've really got to move you. Ilair tried to flap its wings to move itself away, but they folded inwards against its body with the weight of goo on them. The white dragon attempted to run away, but the goo made its claws slick and it sprawled out on the ground. Caden frantically looked back at Raziel and the behemoth. The black dragon still had the main head in its jaws. The head's eyes had rolled back a bit, and its tongue was starting to loll out between its teeth. The other heads were frantic. They were letting out steady howls of pain, not just from the damage that Rosia was doing to the main head, but the opening in its body, the opening that was closing. It's healing, but it will be smaller, weaker than before. Olair, we need to get you up and cleaned and... Caden babbled. Iolair was sending an icy mist over itself, freezing the goo, and then it shattered the frozen material, which harmlessly fell off and shattered on the ground. Iolair looked up at him with pleasure and desire for approval. Excellent, keep going, Caden urged. There was a roar, but this time not from the behemoth, but from Raziel. He and Iolair immediately looked back at the black dragon. The other heads had finally gotten it together and sent a wave of their different powers at Raziel. The black dragon lifted a wing, blocking the acid, fire, and electricity and more. If the attack had been more concerted, it would have hurt the black dragon, but the behemoth just wanted to get away. The behemoth was dragging its bulk as fast as it could away from Raziel. The black dragon sent a gout of flame after it, singeing the opened back and causing a wail of pain from the retreating beast. Raziel flapped its own wings, but they were still ragged and wounded and slumped. Raziel! Caden cried in agony. Iolair quickly froze almost its entire body and then cracked all the foul, frozen goo off of it. The two of them then hurried to Raziel's side. The black dragon made a soft, welcoming sound as soon as it saw them approaching. Caden grabbed that big head again and kissed the black dragon over and over. Raziel let out a puff of black smoke in amusement that had Caden gasping and moving back, waving a hand in front of his face. You big, beautiful dragon, I was so worried when you didn't move. Caden's throat closed up. Foolish little dragon. None can defeat me. For long, Raziel answered and appeared to smile. It was a bit of a toothy smile, but it was a smile nonetheless. Caden found himself laughing and crying. Tears flowed down his face, and he had to bite on his right hand to stop the flow of hysterical crying. Iolair nuzzled his back. Raziel nuzzled his front. Caden let out a burbling laugh again and touched both their snouts. Sorry, guys. I'm sort of hysterical, I think, Caden snuffled. That is acceptable, considering. Raziel looked back towards the rapidly disappearing behemoth. It still couldn't fly, but then again, neither could Raziel. Not yet, considering everything. What do we do? Caden asked. The behemoth is really injured. I think we have a shot to, um, to, um, oh, cute. For the first time in real life, he got to see Raziel and Iolair press their foreheads together. Their eyes slid partially shut, and they both purred. It was a calming, wonderful sound that had Caden feeling a little looser inside, a little warmer. He smiled and felt tears falling down his face again, but this time they were tears of happiness. I wish Valerius could see this. Oh my god, Valerius, 
Uh, guys, guys, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there is more at stake here than the behemoth. Valerius is, is immortal without you, Raziel, Cain reminded the black dragon. Valerius, yes, my Valerius. I want to go back with him. I must be back with him, Raziel muttered. It seems a shame, though, to lose our advantage with the behemoth, Caden said. But I suppose we can fight again another day? Raziel looked after the behemoth again with a grunt. We are losing a great advantage, Raziel said. Iolaire twittered loudly and lightly touched Raziel's still wounded wings. Iolaire is a point. We're in no shape to fight, really. And Valerius could be in real trouble. He and Alarian were going after the horde who was my body. Caden's voice dropped off and he put a hand against his chest. Did the Horde still have his body? Would going through the mirror and the lair simply have him and Iolair amongst the Horde? And what about Valerius and Larian? They gotten hurt? These wounds will keep us where we are. Raziel flapped those ragged wings and let out a wounded sound. Iolair twittered and curled its head against Raziel's chest. Raziel folded those wings around Iolair. Caden again thought, cute. Who knew that two beings as big as buildings could be adorable, as adorable as kittens? Very large kittens with claws and teeth and wings. I cannot fly back to the lair yet, Raziel said almost wearily. You two should go. Caden, you need to get back to the material realm. You and I lair are fully bonded again. It will join with you there. Did you know that you can get some of my gay romance books for free? Every month, I have at least one book free to download, right from Amazon, so you can easily read it on any device. But these books can only be free for five days at a time. If you don't want to miss out, just sign up for my mailing list, and I'll send you an email whenever there's a free book available. The link to the sign-up form is in the description down below. We're not leaving you, Caden said. Iolaire gave a squeak of agreement. What about the others, Landry and her brothers and Jasper? He grimaced as he said that. Their bodies are still controlled by the behemoth. It is unlikely if they return that they will be able to take back their forms. They will simply be cast adrift. So until the behemoth is destroyed, they can't leave here? It is worse than that, Raziel said with a dip of its head. Worse, Kane's eyebrows lifted. Iolair twittered softly and sadly. It already knew what Raziel was going to say. There will come a time when they will not be able to return, even if the behemoth is defeated. Their souls will not recognize their bodies, Raziel said. Caden blinked. Oh, they'll die then. And they will not be able to go on to where they belong, as they will be trapped here, Raziel explained. This is not where human souls go to return to the wheel. The wheel, reincarnation. Caden's eyebrows lifted. Yes, I have seen the same souls again and again, but these people will be stuck forever here, unable to make the journey they should, and hunted unless they stay in our lairs, Raziel said. Caden felt stunned. That was worse than death. Now that he knew that they went on, humans were reborn, it was amazing, wonderful, really, so no one was ever really lost. If one could stay around long enough in eternity, they would find those who had left them before on another turn of the wheel. But Landry wouldn't return. Her brothers wouldn't. Maybe he wouldn't be that upset if Jasper didn't. But what about all the others? Some of them were clearly misguided, but not malicious like Jasper was. To sentence them to this terrible eternity? No, that would be awful. Oh, how long before that's the case? How long before they can't go back? Caden asked. Raziel would not meet his eyes. Iolair's wings drooped. Not long, Raziel said. So if we don't defeat the behemoth now, which we can't do, it's over for them, isn't it? Cain realized. Raziel nodded. I am sorry. No, no, you have nothing to be sorry about, Caden said and passed a hand over his eyes. They made choices. We did our best. He stared down at his hands. If only we could reach the other dragons, but they're too far away. They would not come. It would leave their bonded ones at risk. It was one thing to leave my Valerius in Mephis's charge, but for all of them to come, Raziel shook his head. Ironic, because killing the behemoth here will stop the explosion from hurting everyone in the material realm, Cain pointed out. Yes, it would, but it is still unsafe. The Horde could destroy our bonded ones, and that. That is worse than anything, Raziel muttered. 
Iolaire nuzzled the black dragon tenderly. Razia was missing Valerius as much as he was. Caden flew gently down to them and stroked their noses. Razia let out a snort at his touch, but its eyes half closed in pleasure. Iolaire pressed the side of its snout against Caden's chest. I love you both, Caden told them. We love you, Raziel said. Love, Iolaire sent. Caden smiled so broadly that his eyes nearly shut. But then Raziel and Iolaire's head snapped up to look back towards the mountain that housed Raziel's lair, and he supposed Iolaire's now, too. Caden spun around. At first, all he saw was the mountain as clouds passed over it. But then there were shapes. Draconid shapes. They started emerging from the mountains and the clouds. Caden began to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's all of them. All the dragons. Holy cow. Meph is in the lead. Caden couldn't help the raucous laughter that left him. He was still flying, so when he curled into a ball, he spun head over feet. Iolaire nosed him to stop his rolling. Caden wiped the tears of amazement from his eyes. It was the third or fourth time he'd cried in such a short space of time, but he didn't care. This all warranted it. Even as he dried his eyes, the seven shapes were not only still in the air, but they were larger. The dragons were really there. But how? How are they here? Caden wondered. The fools, yet. Raziel shook its huge head, red eyes wide with wonder. All seven dragons hovered above them before landing heavily around them. Mephis was nearest. Caden flew right over to the green dragon and reached to embrace its snout. Green eyes widened and Caden lifted his eyebrows. No hug? Just a little one? Caden wiggled his fingers. Mephis reached with one clawed finger and gently rubbed Caden's cheek while chuckling low. I am here for battle, not hugs, little dragon, Mephis said. You know about that nickname, huh? Cool. Caden hugged the huge finger. His gaze swept over to Scylla next. The glittering blue of her scales was like water condensed to a solid. Scylla smiled at him, even as its tail swept majestically. He flew to Scylla next. Esme's spirit allowed the hug. Scylla, you're here. You have no idea. Thank you, Caden said. We heard the call of King Valerius and came, Scylla said. Valerius, is he all right? Is he? He is well, but weak. He needs Raziel back, as do all our bonded ones, Scylla explained. Caden let out a whoosh of breath, knowing that Valerius was okay. Weak, but still okay. That was something. He saw Elderon's glittering golden head rising up over Scylla's shoulder. Elderon, oh, I couldn't forget you. Look how magnificent you are. Caden enthused. Battle is always messy, but I agreed to come. The others cannot do this without me, Eldron told him. Caden flew over to the massive golden dragon who posed and preened for him. Caden admired Eldron and clapped, at which Eldron bowed. Then Caden kissed its snout, which had Eldron blushing. Caden couldn't help laughing. Then it was Lana's turn. As playful as Kayla, Lana snuck under Eldoran's wing, then muscled the golden dragon out of the way to get Caden's attention. Lana, how are you? Wow! Look at the sun and those scales. So gorgeous. But you deserve a sparkling ocean, not this crater, Caden said as he caressed Lana's head. Lana nodded. This place is suffering, but we will end that by ending the behemoth. It was Everin who spoke next. It seems like the battle already began. I see much blood. And it is not yours, Raziel's or Iolaire's. No, both Raziel and Iolaire fought like demons, Caden said. Fought like dragons, Zephira countered. Jahara's magnificent dragon spirit smiled at him. And I see that you played quite the role, little dragon. I couldn't really do anything except distract the behemoth, Caden admitted, his throat getting tight as he remembered his helplessness. Zephira and Everin nuzzled him gently. You were brave, as always, and led the way, Zephira said. Besides, the behemoth's destruction is our duty, Zippel said. The red dragon had kept its distance. Caden slowly approached it. It was May who figured out that using the mirror in the throne room would get us here fast enough, Everin said, shaking its silver-scaled body. Caden stopped before Zippel. Like Mephis, the red dragon was the most unapproachable. But Mephis seemed to have warmed to him. Zippel regarded him steadily. You agreed to come, Caden said. Thank you. Zippel inclined its red head. We are stronger together than apart. 
This is the only way. So you know, Caden swallowed, that you're not alone. Zippel went very still, and a faint look of amusement crossed that draconid face after a brief moment. You would have us all do a group hug. Um, are you down for that? Caden lifted his shoulders. Zippel tipped its head back and laughed, which was a dark, throaty sound. Then Zippel inclined his head so that he could give it a brief kiss before retreating back to Raziel and Iolaire. Raziel was regarding all the other dragons with something akin to shock. Iolaire twittered and cuddled against the large black chest. All the dragons regarded them back. We have come to have you lead us into battle again, Raziel. Zephira intoned and bowed its head. The others followed suit, with Zippel and Mephis bowing last, but definitely bowing. Iolaire twittered in awe. There was this exchange of power. Caden felt the blast of it from all the dragons to Raziel. Raziel's wings suddenly spread to the sides, and Caden gasped as they were healed. First among equals, Caden thought. The black dragon rose up. Let us end this. I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Dragon's Reign is free for you to enjoy, but not free for us to make. There is a whole team working with me for audio editing, artwork, graphic design, and custom music. Most YouTube channels and podcasts have sponsors and take ads, but because of the kind of content we make, we can't run ads or get sponsors. Instead, we have other ways you can support me and the team behind this gay romance audiobook. One easy way is to buy or borrow my books from Amazon. They are all gay romance set in alternative worlds with vampires or shifters and other magical beings. You may not know that even if you borrow books with your Kindle Unlimited subscription at Amazon, they are free for you, but they still earn us money. The books are published under the name Ex Aratare, which actually means wraith in Romanian. And if you love audiobooks, you can get professionally narrated versions of every one of my books on audible.com. The link to my author page is in the description below, as well as to the first book of the series I think you'll really like. Thank you so much for your support. People like you enable me and the team to keep writing these stories of gay romance, magic, monsters, and true love, and producing this very fun podcast for everyone. Thank you. Thank you.